we may think that because the sacrifices precede the coming work of the Messiah in history, then therefore the sacrifices are the thing that Christ then mimics. But it's the reverse. The sacrifices were instituted in God's providence to teach us and instruct us and lead us, and and I'm saying us as the people of God, to lead Israel, in effect, as a juvenile people, unto the fullness and their true inheritance. So these are like, I don't mean to be uh, diminutive or whatever, demeaning, but the lessons that Israel was receiving in promises, types, and, and shadows, and the sacrifices, they're children's lessons in, in terms of spiritual maturity that are meant to, to give us a framework and, a, and an object lesson, visual depiction of what Messiah would do. And then Messiah comes and, and acts, and he is the full and the final ultimate sacrifice who does what none of the other sacrifices could have done on their own. Those sacrifices are merely a, uh, a temporary or provisional means of grace until the true sacrifice would come. Right, the blood Absolutely. of bulls, blood of bulls and goats can never take away sins, but the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ by His own blood that absolutely uh, right. atones for our sins, and then He goes into a place that no priest ever could. He enters into the most holy place, and there are seeds yeah. for us there. So, so we always want to start with the work of Christ, and then realize that the whole mosaic economy and administration, everything going on in the sacrificial system, the whole Levitical order. All of that was meant to lead us to Christ, but now that Christ has come, a priest of uh, the order of Melchizedek, totally different order, he is the full, the fullness, the finality, the ultimate. And now the, the rest has done its job, and it led us there, and now it's passed away. Almost as if it were a scaffolding that is to, to be to fall away with mm. the the revelation. That's of a the good truth. illustration. Yeah. Uh, now, it, I think uh, the, Dr. Klein, Meredith Klein, would, would point out that the Old Testament sacrifices uh, do have a sacramental character by virtue of God's grace, but they themselves have no power. And that's what the writer, to the, as you've already said, the writer right. of the Hebrews reminds us. But by God's grace, they, they're pointers, right? They're yeah. Pointers they're to, a means of grace, but, right, they, but right. they have no power in them themselves, right? Right. Just like the bread and the wine in the Lord's Supper. It's a means of grace, but they're just ordinary elements. Correct. And that's probably a good, that's a good analogy for people to to maybe uh, a nail to to hang their hat on. 